Okay, go. All right. Welcome to high school football on Surge Sports. It's an out-of-state matchup for the Gales as they travel to Bardonia, New York to take on the Falcons of Albertus Magnus. Hello, friends, and welcome inside the broadcast booth alongside Elijah Weintraub, Jack Rizzo. Really great to be back after missing last week. Uh, we got an interesting one today here in the parochial cup here in the state of New York. Let's start off with the Gales, Eli. They are rolling. They've won four of their last five, including their last two. What have they been doing so well, and how do they continue doing that today? Well, it starts off with that offense. Bradley Higgins has been doing an excellent job. Brian Cunningham continuing his streak with touchdowns. Nazir Owens also continuing his run game. The rushing has been impressive and been improving so much more. Paul Rocho, crucial part when it comes to kicking. Uh, we noticed it, especially in Hasbro Kites, when he's making that 33-yard kick. Uh, and just going to continue on tonight. And their defense has been improving, and uh, now just needs to continue on with the win. Just curious, what do, how do the Gales adjust it without Damian Merkerson? He is not playing today. Well, they have to just play like if he was and continue running the ball to Nazir Owens because you're white and uh, Brian Cunningham. Those are going to be your three star players to watch out for. And I think if you continue to watch out with those three, then you'll be fine and good to go. And you won't even have to worry. And it will be like that he is actually playing. Uh, let's turn it over now to the Falcons, who are 2-5 and five on the season. But uh, what are you looking to see from them today as maybe may, you know, maybe they could pull off an upset today against the Gales? Well, the Falcons are looking for an absolute great and dominant performance in the offense, continue to stay strong in the defense, and able to stop the ball on fourth down attempts and third down attempts. If they are able to do that and their kicking is on a point, then that was how you're going to win the game today. Yeah, they, the, the Falcons need to get back on track, especially after that 39 to nothing loss last week. Um, but it should be an interesting one here. Coming up on Surge Force, kickoff is at 2 p.m. Elijah Weintraub, Jack Rozo will be on the call. You're watching High School Football on Surge Sports.
Burgess won the toss. They the deferred. Won the toss and elect to receive. Oh, never mind. The receipt is wrong. All right, welcome back to the Gales matchup against Albertus Magnus. The Falcons have won the toss and they have elected to receive the opening kickoff, which is coming up in just a few moments here as both teams get into their huddle. A warm late fall, a warm late October afternoon here in Bardonia, New York. Perfect day for some football. All right, we are just ready to get the kickoff here. Paul Rocha going to kick it away for the Gales with with number 11 back deep for Albertus Magnus. And the kick is away. It's going to bounce, and it'll be fielded near the 20-yard line and still going to the 35-yard line, and that is where the Falcons will begin their first drive as Giovanni Vernarin returns to the opening kickoff, and that is where the Falcons and Vinny Pisatelli will begin his opening drive. Good kick from Paul Rocho, and now it's time for the St. Mary defense to do their job and to stop the Alberta Magnus Falcons run game from Senator Thomas P. Morgan Field. So first down for the Falcons. And first play, they're going to throw it, and he pulls it down. Now he's going to flip it downfield, and it is broken up by Jonathan Huertas, who is ha just having a marvelous season uh, defending the pass. Nice break up there, second down. Huge try for Samers to try to get that ball back in. Huertas was right in there, and Albertus Magnus, uh, the quarterback, has a great arm and a good throw there. Great uh, job for Huertas being right there in front. Would have been a great catch if you would have caught it. So second down for the Falcons after the incomplete pass. And they're going to pitch it. And a nice play there by the Gales to stop Johnny Arginio the senior running back. It's going to be a loss of about three on the play and a great job there by the Gales edge. And it's going to be third down coming up for the Falcons. Yeah, good job by the St. Mary defense, unable to move the running game and Albertus Magnus unable to move through. So third down and long coming up for the Falcons. Possible play Gale's call change. To, Gale's looking to get a three and out here on their opening drive. Piscitelli, he's going to set up a screen to the far side, but that is covered up by the Gales as Ricardo Herrera, the first there. Another loss on the play, and the Falcons go three and out on their opening drive. And looks like the punt team is going to come on for the Falcons. So good job by the Gales defense there. Yeah, huge job by the Gales defense right away, able to stop the ball, pushing them back. A good first down chance for the Gills with Huertas there. And a great, excellent start here in New York for the Gales. So the Falcons will punt this one away with Nasir Owens and B.J. Cunningham back deep. And a nice punt here. And it's going to bounce out of bounds at the 43 yard line. And with 10.02 remaining, that is where the Gales begin their first possession. And on comes the junior quarterback, Bradley Higgins, who is just having a fantastic year under center 
uh, converted tight end, but he is just doing a fantastic job, really showing off that arm strength and his dual threat ability. Absolutely, and he had a, he threw for one passing touchdown last week, had 172 passing yards, and overall he's been playing excellent, and from a converted tight end to a quarterback, he is doing an excellent job. And now we'll see what Bradley Higgins can do on this offense. This is great starting field position for the Gales here at the 42 yard line. As you can see, a lot of players wearing pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Today's um, the last day. Yep, last Saturday, last Saturday of October. Yeah. So first down, two, two backs in the backfield for St. Mary's, and it'll be Owens to take it. And he's gonna be stopped at the 44, so a minimal gain there for the Gales. Owens had a, a, another 100 yard performance last week, another rushing touchdown. And he has just had quite the season. Of course, the NJIC Player of the Week for week number zero against Garfield. Like Ron Anderson with the tackle. Uh, Nazir Owens with the carry. Overall great play. And uh, not a bad job. They were able to run the ball. And good job by Anderson for the Falcons to stop early. Again, the Gales have won four of their last five. And they have been really good on the road this season. Four and two record on the road. Second and seven. Huertas, he's gonna, they're going to hand off in the end round to Huertas, and that is swallowed up by the Falcons. It's Malvin Corona there to make the stop. It's a loss of four, uh, looks like a loss of four or five on that play, and it's going to be a third and long for St. Mary's. Well, it's one of those plays you just got to ignore aside, and you saw the pressure was coming. And third down is where they can uh, definitely deliver here. Gil's been, Gil's been really good on third down this season. They're going to line three receivers out to the right with Cesar Ramirez, the lone receiver out to the left. Looks like a passing situation here for the Gales. Third and 12. And Higgins is going to look downfield. He's got a man, and it's caught for the first down. Just B.J. Cunningham with the grab. And it's a first down for the Gales, a gain of 18 on the play. Nice job there by the Gales. Huge job by Brian Cunningham for going all the way deep back, and great catch made. Bradley Higgins with an incredible arm and a good throw there for Brian Cunningham to make the catch. Yeah, Higgins has really shown off his arm strength this year. Obviously, he has his background as a baseball pitcher, so he's got that arm strength. I want to give a shout-out also to Nasir Owens on that play for the block that he threw on the passing play. So it was just a great team play by the Gales first down. Higgins is going to throw it again, and on the comeback, he's got Cunningham again. He's going to have another first down. So back-to-back -back grabs for B.J. Cunningham, which takes them down to the 30-yard line. So 30 total yards over these last two th catches by B.J. Cunningham. Yeah, two amazing first down plays there for Brian Cunningham and one crucial star. And remember, every single game he has had except for one, he's scored a touchdown. We'll see if he continues that streak up tonight. Yeah. He does it all for the Gales. Receiver, defensive back, punter, kick returner. He is a huge part of this offense. First down for the Gales. And Higgins is going to throw it. He's going to look over the middle, and it's high, incomplete. Intended for Jonathan Huertas, the sophomore. And it's an incomplete pass. First incompletion of the game for the Gales. Second down. Huge second down coming up for the Falcons and both the Gales. A huge throw attempt there. The defense was able to cover. And now we'll see what happens here on second down. Second and 10, Falcons 30. Gales have looked really efficient so far on offense, throwing the football. Kazir White lined up in the backfield with Nasir Owens. And Higgins is going to throw it again, get us a little screen for Cunningham. He's trying to turn field. He breaks a tackle. Cunningham into the clear. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Higgins to Cunningham yet again. And the Gales on the board. Another streak continues for Brian Cunningham. A great touchdown there. And great pass from Bradley Higgins and a, what, what a way to start off quite the move, in quite, New York. Quite the move there by Cunningham. It looked like it was a design screen to the inside, but he cut it back to the outside, and he can fly when he gets into the open field, and a great way to start that for the Gills. An opening drive touchdown, three catches on the drive for B.J. Cunningham for a total of 60 yards. That was a very impressive drive there for the Gills as they are on the board here in the Parochial Cup, and they will attempt the extra point to make this try to make this a 7 to nothing game. So Paul Rocho has done a great job kicking this year. And his extra point is good. 
and the Gills lead 7 to nothing with 7.45 remaining in the first. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to New York. Jack Rizzo, Elijah Weintraub, Ryan Cunningham with the touchdown. Last week, when in New Milford, he had one receiving touchdown and ran for 48 receiving yards. Leads team currently with 634 receiving yards, and the streak continues on as Paul Roger gets Wait. it underway. Yep, the Sun has come back out here in Alberta Banks, and the kick is fumbled by the Falcons and it is recovered at the 24. Near disaster mm -hmm. there for the Falcons, but. Ryan Moran was able to clean it up there just in time to prevent the turnover, but not great starting field position for the Falcons. Close chances there for the Gales to possibly take back over. The Falcons right away there to stop it, and now we'll see what they'll do on first down. Again, the Falcons have really been struggling this year. They are 2-5 and five coming off a 39 to nothing loss, so. But again, the Gales, these two teams kind of going in opposite directions. Falcons went three and out in this drive. We'll see if they can do better on this drive. Two running backs in the back for Pistatelli, and he's going to keep it himself. And he is stopped at the line of scrimmage and able to push it forward for a couple of extra yards. It's gained about four on the play. Tackled by a couple of different Gales defenders. It's going to be second down. Huge stop there for the St. Mary defense. A good gain for the Falcons. And now trying to knock it another first down is key. So second and six now. And Piscitelli, or that's not Piscitelli, that's, that is, yeah, Johnny Oringio, who is their other, I guess their other quarterback, took the carry there, and looks like he is going to be just short. Uh, nope, they're going to give him the, they're going to give him the six. First down for First down with plenty of time. 6.56 remaining as the clock continues to down. So the first, down. first down of the game as a nice run there. As Vinny Piscitelli back under center for Albertus Magnus. So first and 10 for the Falcons. All their playmakers lined up to the right, and they are going to roll out to the right. Piscitelli again going to keep it himself. And he is... They haven't blown the whistle yet, and now he's up to the 41. Gain of six there, and the Falcons doing a good job right now pushing this line and getting those extra yards. Looks like it appears to be the helmet has came has come off for uh, Johnny for Johnny Oregano. Yeah, Oregano. Argino. Argino. So second and five for the Falcons with Piscitelli back under center. And Fagan, and they're going to now hand it off to the inside. And not much there for the Falcons. Maybe a two-yard game, but it is third down as Ryan Moran carried that one. Third down for the Falcons. Huge, huge game there for Falcons. Now trying to execute on third down. About 5.30 left here in the first quarter. See what the Falcons have drawn up here on third and short. It's been all running plays for them on this drive. See if they go back to that. Piscitelli and Moran line up in the backfield. And a bad snap. Piscitelli is going to roll out to the right. He's got to get to the 45, and he is not going to get there. 
What a play by Kazir White. The closing speed to get him. Looks like maybe a loss of one or known gain. But fourth down, that was quite the play by Kazir White. Huge game by Kazir White and a huge, uh, huge tackle by Kazir White. Excuse me. And uh, right away on time to deliver a fourth down. And again, his numbers have been pretty impressive for Kazir White and defense improving week after week and continuing to dominate for the St. Mary's team with 4.36 to go. The punt team will come on for Albertus Magnus on this fourth and four. So the Gales get a stop thanks to Kazir White with just a great play on that. The closing speed to get him on that fumble by Piscitelli. All running plays for, for the Falcons on that drive as BJ Cunningham back to receive the punt. And this is a short punt. It's going to go out of bounds at the We'll have to see where the refs spot this one. Not a great punt, though. And it's going to be spotted at the 37-yard the 37. The 37 line. And that is where the Gales will begin their second possession. We'll keep it right here. Good punt. Stops at 37. Perfect timing. Almost rather the same position, if not a little bit more, for where St. Mary's has started previously. Yeah. On their it's, last drive. It's a 22-yard punt, and back go the Gales on offense. They had a great drive last time. B.J. Cunningham, three catches, 60 yards, and finished it off with a touchdown. First down, Higgins is going to set up a little screen here to Kazir White, and he's got some room up to the 42. So five-yard gain there. And it's going to be second and five for the Gales. Second and five, good gain on the play there for St. Mary's. And now it's a matter of just continuing to execute and to get in, continue to get that first down and get into Falcons territory with 3.45 left to go. And again, the Falcons receive the opening kickoff, so the Gales will get it to begin the second half. No, we're a long way away from there, but just wanted to mention it. So second and five for the Gales. Owens remains the tailback along with Kazir White, and it's going to be Kazir White again to take it. Cuts back, and he's got a first down up across midfield into the 44-yard line. Nice play there by the Gales. A gain of about 12 or 13. First down for the Gales. Huge first down for St. Mary's, and what a gain there. Down, and, down. of course, this is going to begin their success. Their success. So with third down plays, they're able to get through first downs, and that is going to be crucial going in for the remainder of this game. Under three now to play in the first quarter. Gales continue to move the ball efficiently downfield and they'll send Huertas in motion. And here's Owens on the carry and he's gonna be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. That is a loss of four, looks like. A good play there by the Falcons' defense. Gills will make some changes. Second down now for the Gills. And this year, Owens back in the backfield. BJ Cunningham lined up on the near side. Second and 15. Here's Owens, and he's got some room. Owens in the open field. He's still going, and he is up across the 35 with a first down for the Gills, or at least very close to it. He needed 15, and he got 15. First down looks like a first down for the Gills. And never mind. Yard short. Short. So 14-yard gain there, but it makes it third and manageable. Almost certainly two down territory here, but we will see. So third one, they're going to line up in the I formation with Nick Ford lined up near Bradley Higgins. Bertus Magnus playing straight up defense. And they're going to toss it to White. He's got a first White down. Kazir White is inside the 10, and he takes it home for the touchdown. Huge there. Huge touchdown there for uh, Kazir White. Huge run game, and that is excellent start for St. Mary's. Only, it's already 14-0, and only... 90 seconds left, still remaining in the first quarter. Huge job by Kazir White. And now the Gales are going to continue on. That was that was also success. that was also that was just great blocking by the offensive line. And then the speed of Kazir White in the open field. A I think a 36-yard touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. 
Gil's lead, 13 to nothing, could be 14, pending this extra point from Paul Rocha, who made his first one. Could not have asked for a better start if you're the Gales. And the extra point by Rocho is good. 14 to nothing. The Gales lead with a minute 29 remaining in the first quarter. We'll be back after this. All right, Gales lead 14 to nothing here near the end of the first quarter. We've got 89 seconds to play. Two touchdowns, one by B.J. Cunningham, one by Kazir White. The Gales are just rolling right now as they will as they will give the ball back to the Falcons. Falcons have had some issues on the kickoff, so Rocho will kick it away, and it's going to go out of bounds for a penalty. So the ball will be at the 35-yard line. So decent starting field position for the Falcons. The Yells have just done a real. They've done a great job on special teams this year. If you remember a couple weeks back against Hasbro Kites, Paul Rocho placed a perfect kick on the kickoff, which then led to a safety. They then returned that kick. This they also returned a kickoff for a touchdown. They have just done a great job on special teams. Yes, this they have. Year. They've done an excellent job on special teams, and, and, and kudos to the coaching staff for all their hard work on that because special teams definitely the answer with kicking and punting, huge part. You just, you've just seen how much the Gales have grown this year. They're, they're out there, they're playing with so much heart, and they're making everyone at SM so proud of the way they are playing. They are just yes. they are playing their best football right now. Absolutely. So first down. And interesting formation. They're going to hand it off to the tailback, and he is not going to get much. Maybe it looks like a loss of a yard or two on the play. Gale's run defense is playing really, really well right now. Huge run defense. And game there. As a ladybug <laughs> just landed on my head. But that must mean good luck. So good luck for the Gales the rest of the game. And also, how about the Gales' pass events? They've been so good that the, the Falcons yeah. have only attempted one pass, and that was on the first play of the game. We'll see if they go back to it. Interesting formation. Moran in the backfield. They're going to hand it off on the end around to Corona. He's going to be stopped at the 34-yard line. No gain on the play. Third and long coming up for the Falcons. When we come back, you're watching high school football on Surge Sports.
Welcome back to Bardonia, New York for the parochial cup between the Gales and the Falcons. Third and long for the Falcons coming up as the two teams switch sides. Falcons have just one first down today so far on their first three drives. Gales looking to get another stop here on defense. Yes, they will need a huge stop on defense on third down. Overall, they've been playing excellent and We'll you got to think passing situation. They're going to throw it backwards. This might this might be a pass. Double pass. Looking downfield, it's underthrown, and it is broken up. And the whistle now blows, and it's incomplete. I thought that might have been it. It looked like the ball did not hit the ground, but it was Huertas again who broke that up. A second pass breakup of the day as the double pass attempted there as the throw went backwards to Johnny Argino, but he underthrew it. If he had thrown a little bit more, it could have been a much bigger game, but instead fourth down, and you got to think punting situation here for the Falcons, but good yeah. stop there by the Gales. Huge stop by the Gales. And interesting uh, decision, an interesting call there with the double play. And... Now with 11.51, they'll punt it at fourth down. P.J. Cunningham once again back deep to return the punt. And that was nearly blocked. Good pressure there. And it's going to roll out at the 32-yard line. And we have a player down for the Falcons. And we will take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Bardonia, New York, as the Gales begin their third drive. The player down for Albertus Magnus was freshman Sean McGinnis. He's getting looked at on the sidelines. Hope he's all right. The Gales begin their third drive, though, from the 31-yard line. They have had two very impressive drives. See if they can continue that here. So first and 10. Play action, and Higgins is going to look downfield. He's got a man there, Huertas. He's got oh, it. Cow. Huertas in the open space, and he's going to go. 
One play, 70 yards, and the Gills roll all over the Falcons so far. As there was nobody there to stop um, Huertas can fly. There was nobody back deep for Albertus Magnus and an easy touchdown there for the Gales. Wow, that was an impressive throw from Bradley Higgins and huge catch there made by Jonathan Huertas. Jonathan Huertas, we know he has speed and he knows that we know he can catch and that proved for sure when he had that 60 yard touchdown earlier this season at home. Yeah, it's funny, we were, we were just talking about him on the commercial and how big of an impact he's had and then right as we come back he just he scores a 70 yard touchdown a beautiful throw from Higgins as well and again Huertas can fly once he's in the open field nobody's catching him so it is 20 to nothing Gills and on one play they they take it the distance Orocha's extra point and it is blocked no good so the score will remain 20 to nothing the Gills lead with 11:32 in the second quarter we'll be back after this Go back on. The Gills rolling all over the Falcons here early in the second. They lead 20 to nothing. And the, they will give it back to the Falcons with Paul Rocho to kick it away. One play, 70 yard touchdown for the Gills. They are three for three on their drives. And Rocho with a short kick. It's going to bounce. The Falcons have got to feel this, and they will. Oh, and a player just got ran over by Nick Ford, and then he comes to make the tackle. My goodness, he just destroyed that player for the Falcons, just mauled them over, and the, wow. they, they'll begin, the Falcons will begin their drive at the 27. Well, this this has just been a dominating performance by the Gales so far as Absolutely. they come back on defense. And as they go back on defense, and huge, game, huge snap from uh, <laughs> one of the biggest hits I've seen all biggest, year. It's, yeah, exactly. That was a, that was just a pop, a clean hit as well, just did everything right there, and then went back to made the tackle. Right. It's all about the effort. The Albertus Magnus back on offense. They have not done a lot so far. They have just one first down. Piscitelli is going to roll out. He's got to get rid of it. Now does, and it's incomplete. Another hit there by the Gills, as that pass was intended for Johnny Arginio, the other quarterback. And it's incomplete. Second down. All right, big second down coming up for Falcons. You know, they haven't been able to move the ball too much, so they need some room, and they need some effort and a chance to continue to move and run that game back. Look at Jonathan Huertas. He had 65 receiving yards in the last game versus New Milford. Keep in mind, New Milford had a victory over St. Mary. Uh, St. Mary's beat New Milford 28-21 as the next play begins. Passes Bob and Bichetelli. He's just going to throw it, and it's intercepted. I don't know where he was throwing that. I don't know if he could see, but the pass is picked, and there are multiple flags on the field because you're right with the interception. The flag's back near where Bichetelli got hit. We'll see what this is. I don't know. I didn't see when the flag came in, but they're discussing. If it stands, it will be the first takeaway for the Gales today. And it could, it could be after the interception. We'll have to see. So the, we'll see. And it's a roughing the passer on the Gales. That's going to give them an automatic first down and take away the interception so a, a break there for the Falcons so the interception is taken off the board and the Falcons will get a first down up to the 42 yard line and yeah and, and by the way this wasn't because your white's first interception he, didn't to count. he had one interception before this made his second interception but uh 
Well, good chance there for St. Mary's, but the Thousand Flags caused a pushback for St. Mm -hmm. Mary's. Oh, certainly a break there for the for the for the Falcons. I don't know what Pichatelli was doing there. I mean, he was just like you know, just kind of just threw one up and it was intercepted. But flag and another chance for the Falcons. They'll have a first to ten at the forty-two. Just their second first down, and one has come by the way of penalty. And now flag. we have an encroachment. I think on the Gales. That's number fifty. It's gonna make it first and five. It's on fifty for St. Mary's. That's Mabel. So, back-to-back -back penalties on the Gales. Their third penalty of the game. So, it's going to be first and five now for the Falcons. And they started to move the sticks. You, you, you don't have to move the sticks right now. <laughs> Too early. <laughs> they already thought it was the first down, but it's not. First down and ten. And we have a delay on the field for some reason. Timeout taken by the Falcons, their first of the half. And we will also take a timeout. We'll be back after this. Back out of the timeout. First and five for Albert's Mike. It's been, it's been a long time since we've actually had a play run. There's been a couple of penalties and a, a timeout by the, by the Falcons. First down for Albertus Magnus. First and five after the offsides penalty. Fischitelli is going to hand it off here around the right side, and Arginio's got no room to run. He's going to lose two yards. He also lost his helmet. Good play there by the Gale, second down. Looks like he also lost his helmet on that play, too. That was, again, uh, Johnny Ar Arginio for Albertus Magnus for losing the helmet. Second and seven for Albertus Magnus. Taking a long time here to snap this, and they finally do. Pichetelli going to roll out to the right. Now he's going to float it in the flat, and it's incomplete. Nothing there for the Falcons. Good defense by the Gales. Third down with 10.02 in the second quarter. Good defense there for St. Mary's, and a huge, huge play for the Gales to stop, and now third down. They need to stop in order to get the ball back in first down territory. Going back to Kazir White from earlier, he had one passing and receiving touchdown the last game in the Milford. 23 passing yards, 45 receiving yards, and a controversial fumble play hey, in that last game. 2020 was the yeah. final. I remember that so crazy game he had against Beckton. Just made some unbelievable catches. Third down. They're going to hand this one off and yeah, cutting it back to the inside. And I think he's going to have it. It was... Moran on the carry, and they are going to give him the first down. So 
the first third down conversion from the Falcons today. And they are up to the St. Mary 48-yard line. Nine, about nine and a half minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Really nice day here in New York. Great day here in New York, as you mentioned to yep. me. In the high 70s, not snowing like Denver. And First uh, down, and oh, no. now the Gales go off sides again. I don't, I don't know why that's a penalty. Because usually if it's if it's somebody on the outside jumping, they usually let the play run. Or if they don't stab it, they have time to get back. So, But either way, it is an offsides on the Gales. Their second offsides penalty on this drive. It's going to be first and five. So Albertus Magnus moving the ball here. Not the way they envisioned, but they are at the 43 with a first and five. See if they can take advantage of this good field position. And now we have early movement, and this is going to be coming back. A false start. So that negates the offsides penalty. It's going to be back to first and 10. All right, well, you go back and forth in these times with those flags and everything. Interesting uh, decisions here. And it has felt like a long time. So we're only at the nine minute mark here. A lot of stoppage of times. And. We'll see what happens next on the play. Yeah, the clock is running down after all these penalties. We are down to under nine minutes in the second quarter. Eli and I are going to flip rolls after halftime. So first and ten now. There have not been a lot of plays around this drive. There's been a lot of stoppages and penalties. Piscitelli is going to roll out to the right with Ford coming from behind. Look out. He's hit as he throws. Downfield and passes... Interception. Intercepted. Intercepted by Kazir, Kazir White. So that is his second. Kazir White, who had the interception on before, was taken back. He's got one now. Just this time, just on the other side of the field. It's a takeaway for the Gales, and they will begin their next drive. I did not. I couldn't really tell what happened there, but yeah, he, great very play on the sideline. And goes call there. He did catch it. Because you're right, did catch it. It was just a matter of did he step out of bounds in time. He clearly did not. St. Mary's get the ball back. Huge job and huge gain there for because you're right to stop it and get the ball back. And now St. Mary's has the first down at the 35. First down for, for the Gales. Higgins has 142 passing yards. Now he's going to keep it himself. And he's going to push it forward for about three yards. Higgins up the middle for a game of three. So it's a three-yard gain on the play. Second and seven from the 38. Gales already lead 20 to nothing here midway through the second quarter. The most they put up 41 points in the first half. Couple weeks back against Wallington. Second and seven. Owens is going to take it. And he's held, led up at the 40-yard line, just a two-yard gain on the play, and a third down situation here for the Gales. Huge third down attempt. And St. Mary's definitely needs to continue on, and it looks like it's going to be a timeout called. Uh, looks like it. Timeout by who's, who took the timeout? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Actually, no, I don't think so. Timeout. Just a stoppage. I'm not sure what they're discussing here. But the Gales are heading to their sidelines. Uh, we have a little stoppage here. I'm not sure what's going on here. But we'll keep it here for now. We know there's a timeout called. Yeah, well, there's a stoppage by the officials. Albertus Magnus getting hy back hydrated, as are the Gales. Uh, once play does resume in a minute or so. What? Water break. Yeah. Yep. So it's going to be third and five. The Gales heading back out onto the field. Virtus Magnus is putting their helmets back. Yep, we're just about ready to resume play. It's going to be third and five for the Gales. 
Again, Bradley Higgins has already having just a monstrous first half. He has five for six passing, 142 yards, and he's got two passing touchdowns. And those two passing touchdowns have combined to be 100 yards. Absolutely. So 100 of those 142 yards have been on two separate touchdowns. He is just having a fantastic game and a fantastic season overall. You know. And the clock continues to wind down with seven minutes. Seven minutes left. Third and five for the Gales. See what they have drawn up here. And the blitz is coming. Higgins is going to dump it off. Completion there to Kazir White. He's going to have the first down. And he is still going down the sideline. And White is tackled. That almost looked like another yeah, touchdown. But what a tackle there by Moran on it defense. Like White now. is down. And uh-oh. And yeah, looks like looks like Kazir White might be down there. Yeah, we'll go to break. Yep, we will take a short break. Midway through the second quarter, we'll be back. All right, so because your way was down for the Gales, he was able to get up on his own power, but he is off the field for now. First down for the Gales at the 32-yard line. Bradley Higgins having one hell of a game so far throwing. Now 6 of 7 passing. He is close to 200 yards in the first half. We're midway through the second quarter, and he's just having a fantastic game. They're going to go with an I formation, though, here with B.J. Cunningham, the lone receiver on the near side. And they're going to pitch it out to Owens. And Owens is good blocking by the Gills, and he's going to be up near another first down. Looks like he's got it at the 23, at the 22-yard line. And Might be short. Going to be a little short. Uh, nope, they're moving the chains. First down. They are going to give it to him. First down, Gales. So first down for the Gales, the 21. They are threatening again. First down for the Gales. They're just continuing this great drive, and Owens is going to keep it again, and he is hit at the line. That is a nice play there by Malvin Corona, I think, was the one who got there. I yeah, great see, job though. by Malvin Corona. Yeah, it's huge, a huge terrific defense. play, and we have another player down. This For time a Falcon time. is down inside about the 14-yard line, and we will take another break. We'll be back.
Welcome back, everyone. Another injury timeout there, but the player was able to get up on his own power. From what we can tell, it's going to be a second and 10 for the St. Mary Gales as they are driving once again, and the clock is running, even though we just had a timeout. Interesting. Could be because of the score lead. Maybe, yeah. What? We'll let's see, but... So second down for the Gales in the 2023 Parochial Cup here on the 28th of October. First down for the Gales. Owens in the backfield on a second down. And Higgins is going to look to throw, and he's going to go to the end zone looking for Cunningham. He's got it. Touchdown. There's a flat, there is a flag down at the 25. And, yeah, the, the indication is a man downfield, and that is what it is. So the touchdown to Cunningham would have been a second of the game, but it's negated by the ineligible man downfield there. So play took a little too long to develop, but so it's going to be – Second and 15 now, and the touchdown off the board. A huge chance there, um, but uh, what, it was a great catch, but unfortunately, they had to unfortunately stop uh, with due to the energy of man. So, good call there, and St. Mary's can still get back on top. Second and 15 now, following the penalty. Brings up second and 15 for the Gales. Second and 15 for the Gales. And the ball is snapped by Higgins. He's going to play fake. And now he's going to throw it. B.J. Cunningham is down there. And he's got it inside the five. Touchdown. Another flag is down in the end zone. We'll see what this is. The Gales are indicating that this is. Due to our angle here, folks. What's the, have a what's the flag? Here. And it's offensive pass interference on B.J. Cunningham. That would, so another flag on the Gales. Sorry about the camera focus. Unfortunately, due to our angle, we have to really zoom in and tilt for a certain time. So just be uh, patient when it comes to those. Another areas. touchdown taken off the board by the Gales. And they're going to be all the way back now at the 43. Three. Second and 30 now. My goodness, this is... Just two disastrous plays for the Gales. So second and 30 now. Oh my goodness. That was that was a bit of a, thought of maybe a little bit of a questionable call there, but. Second and 30. And wow, Alberta, look at Alberta. They don't have any players back deep. They don't have like a safety playing back. So watch, watch out for over the top here, maybe. So huge play call decision. Now, that, now they send somebody back. Second 30, Higgins with pressure coming. He's going to set up a screen, and it's incomplete. Intended for Nasir Owens. Great defense there by the Falcons. And it's third and 30 now for the Gales. Huge decision there. And wow, that was a close one there. And yeah, now a crucial third down. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, third, third and 30. We'll see what kind of defense Albertus Magnus plays here. The Gales are not in field goal range, so they, they're, they're probably going to need to get very at least very close to the marker to try to kick a field goal all right very good good uh <laughs> the, the second here, folks is second or sorry third and 30 from the 42 albertus magnus will now play two safeties back but you've got a corner line of about 10 yards away from where bj cunningham is see if they can beat him over the top and higgins is going to throw over the middle cunningham pulls it down he's got it cunningham to the 20 first and he's going to be really close to the first down. He's right there. He's going to be short. And he's going to be short. It's going to be fourth down. Uh, third down or second down? It'll be fourth down. Fourth down. The Gales are going to go for it there. What a play, though, to B.J. Cunningham there. That is a 24-yard gain on third and 30. Gills, not surprisingly, are going to go for it here. See if they can get this set up. BJ Cunningham, though, with a, just a fantastic yeah. catch there. Absolutely. Fourth down. Huertas, or sorry, Cesar Ramirez, one on one at the bottom. Fourth down, and Higgins is going to look to throw. Pressure's coming. Higgins in trouble. Gets out of it, and now he's down. The Falcons get home on the blitz, and the Falcons will take over at the 23 yard line. So the Gales cannot convert there. We'll take a break now with the Falcons getting possession. We'll be back.
Turnover on downs there for the Gales on a fourth and six. Bradley Higgins took a sack, so Gales not able to come up with points on that drive with 2.52 remaining in the first half. The Falcons trying to get some anything going here. We'll see if they can. It's going to be first down and 10. Looks like they are in the Wildcat formation here. They are in the Wildcat formation. They'll go five wide. And, and he, Argino's going to keep it himself, and he's got nothing there. Gale Good job by the same area defense, dominate. continuing to once again dominate. And now, with a second down and about 10 to go, at, with 2.35 left to go, plenty of time, and still at the right point in right motion and action to play. Remember, only one time has been used so far, and that was a, by Albertus Magnus Falcons. None were used by same area so that is something to keep in mind about heading into the last few minutes of this game you know even though same areas does have a 20 nothing lead something to keep factor about second and 10 for albertus magnus once again arginio is in the backfield and he's gonna throw it here he's gonna look downfield the pass is caught for the first down so that's I believe that's just their set that is their I believe their first completion of this game and it goes for a first down great job by the Alberta Falcons for getting a first down Zimmer's unable to stop them there but still plenty of time with the minute 50 and still in range of potential scoring again the Gales get the ball to start the second half. So the Falcons looking for a score here. Here's a pass to Moran on the sidelines. And he's going to have another first down. So back-to-back -back completions here as Johnny Arginio is doing a nice job moving the ball. And another flag down. This is... BK! Kusula! And yeah, this is, this is coming back. And we're going to get the call right here. Holding on the offense. Yep, holding on a first pass. I believe that is their first penalty of the game. Yeah. No, no, no. We had the full start. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. We had a full start and then offside for St. Mary's. First and 20. So, that, again, that, that, for that negates Magnus. The, the completion to, to uh, Ryan Moran. First and 20 now with Arginio remaining in the backfield. With remaining under center. Five wide. Looks like five wide here for Albert Magnus. And Arginio is going to throw it. And he's under he's pressure. He's going to take, keep it himself. Up. Now he's going to throw it. And it's incomplete. Actually, it was caught by one of the coaches for the Falcons. But he is not on the field. So it is an incomplete pass. Second down. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. That actually, that actually helps the Gales, though. Because now... It stops the clock, so they don't have to call a timeout if they want to try to maybe get the ball back and try to score before half. I wouldn't think so. I mean, if 20 nothing with minute 13, but we'll interest. Again, the Gales get the ball to start the second half. So Albertus Magnus actually won the toss, but they elected to receive. You don't see that a lot nowadays. Um, I think they said something before on the NFL that like about like over like 95% of teams that win the that the win the coin toss elect to defer. So interesting calls and yeah, the new the new trend in, in football. It's another five wide here for Arginio. This has been the formation for the Falcons this year, and it's going to be a design run. Arginio keeps it, and he is still going up to the 30-yard line, and a timeout called by the Gales, stopping the clock at a minute four left. It's going to be third and 15, and we are going to keep it here, though, for this one as the first half starts to wind down. A well, minute four left, plenty of time, I would definitely say, and you know, great choice by St. Mary's to use a timeout early. They will now have two timeouts going in to the remaining minute and four of this game. Again, a huge third down coming up for the Falcons. They'll need a first down here in order to continue more. And just to give you an update, the NC and non-public B and non-public A brackets will be released tomorrow on NJ.com, so that is when we'll know who St. Mary's plays and when they will play, as well as the rest of the teams in non public A and B. The rest of the sections are already available via NJ.com. The full brackets are there. We will, again, non public A and B will be announced tomorrow. Check NJ.com. We will announce 
who they have on our show, the 12th Version Podcast, which airs every Tuesday and Friday. You'll hear the first from us on Tuesday, 7 Eastern, on Search Sports. So it can... Oh, wait, no, we're not even on. I'm sorry. Are we on? We've been on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> third, and fif- third and 15 for Albertus Magnus coming up with the Gales having two timeouts remaining. A minute four left in the first half. The Gales will receive the second half kickoff. Halftime coming up in just a second. It's been a great performance by the Gales today on both sides of the ball. Bradley Higgins almost 200 yards passing. The Gales defense is a lot, I believe, only three or four first downs today. Third and 15 for Albertus Magnus. We'll see if the Gales can get a stop here and try to get the ball back. They'll have two backs to the left of Arginio. What? It is now officially done. Yeah, he's being... He's being carted Sean off the field. McGinnis, the freshman, They're going to run it to Moran. Now officially done. To the he's side, off. and the ball comes out. The ball is out on the ground and recovered by the Gales. And it's Gales' ball. Wow. The pop there, the second turnover. I couldn't tell who knocked it out, but it is the second takeaway for the Gales, and they are in great field position. And with 54 seconds, they have a chance to st- extend their lead. Great job by uh, the St. Mary's defense. Able to get the ball back, and now great field position with two timeouts and 54 seconds. They can easily get another touchdown, if not some points up, before the quarter expires and ends. Plus, two timeouts left. Great chances for St. Mary's. Keep in mind also, the uh, Sean McGinnis, the freshman, is now officially done for today's game. He is being carted off yeah, out yeah. of the field. Certainly not great um, for the Falcons. First down and timeout. Albertus Magnus calls a timeout. And uh, we will... We'll keep it here. Yep. Should be a quick timeout. Um, but it's not, we'll, so Eli, as we wind down the first half here, let's talk about the Gales. I know the Gales' offense has been prolific, but how about their defense, though? They've only allowed just a handful of first downs. Uh, they have two takeaways now. John Lemware tossed a couple of pass breakups in the secondary. What have you seen from this Gales' defense? Well, I've seen improvement from day one, and they've, especially this might have been by far one of their best games defensively all season long. We had two interceptions. We had a crazy amount of stoppages. This might be one of their best defensive games all season long. But don't get me wrong. They played great in the previous games, but this might be their best one for the what defense tonight. Last week's, last week's final score was 28-21 versus New Milford. They took the victory. They were away due to weather reasons. And, and keep in mind earlier, we – hang on, we have – let me just, we have just confirmed that, or at least we believe, that Jonathan Huertas was the one who knocked the ball out. So his tremendous first half continues. He had a 70-yard a receiving touchdown, a couple of pass breakups, and now a forced fumble to give the Gales the ball back in great field possession. Well, that is great for Jonathan Huertas. And remember, he's been on fire, absolutely. He, again, the most famous play that we had for him this season was home when he had the 60-yard touchdown. And again, Higgins continuing back. to deliver once more. Higgins is going to roll out. Now he's going to dump it off. Pass is caught. By Kazir White. Kazir White has not. Di- I think he said. Oh, the clock. The clock is running. Clock is running. But there is a player down. another player is down for Albertus Magnus. The clock doesn't stop till 39 yeah. seconds. They have been but hampered t- by injuries in this first half. And yes, we will take a break. Not due to the probably because of the weather. But yeah.
All right, welcome back. Another injury for Albertus Magnus. It is number 50-something. One. 51. Reese Arago has been carted off. Looks like he's holding that right shoulder, perhaps. Not good for Albertus Magnus. It's gonna be it's gonna be first down though for the Gills at the 13 yard line. They're Before threatening. I went to break, I did say that it was definitely the wood, not only just uh -huh. player contact. First down. Higgins is gonna throw up to the back of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Dangerous play there. 30 seconds. Higgins clock is stopped. Fortunate that they underthrew that, or else that could have been intercepted. Caesar Ramirez is the closest receiver to that. The clock stops with exactly 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. So the clock stops. The Gales trying to punch this one in. They are at the 14-yard line. So if they, if they would have had to kick it, it would be about a 31 or 32-yard try from here. Again, the Falcons blocked an extra point earlier in the second quarter. The Gales, though, trying to score a touchdown here. Again, because your wife, by the way, who got hurt before is back in the game. So he is all right. B.J. Cunningham, the lone receiver to the right. We've got three receivers lined up to the left. Higgins going to roll out, and he's going to the end zone, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the Falcons, and it's going to be taken up across the 20-yard line. And a takeaway for the Falcons near the end of the first half, and the Gales do not score. Wow. Just, I think that's all you could really say for this. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the uh, we'll see if the Falcons run a play if they decide to uh, run a play here. If they are just going to take this one into the half, but. Unfortunate circumstance there for St. Mary's as their last drives were not able to capitalize. But a 20 to nothing lead is still very, very solid. They have been, especially the, with the way they're playing on defense, they have just yeah. been playing incredible. And it looks like the Falcons are going to perhaps run a play here. It looks like they are. Yeah, I, th I think they are going to run a play. Um, so we'll see how this first half ends. 20 seconds remaining, keep in mind. Yep. First down. For those who are joining us, Jack Rizzo, Elijah Weintraub, we welcome you inside. 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And Pitchu Argenio, he's going to try to get to the outside. He's going to go out of bounds. So that's going to stop the clock. At 13 seconds. Yeah, 13. They're going to maybe try to run. I don't know if they're going to try to run another play or not, but they got to be careful that they don't Tom Barry possibly and give the Gills another chance. But, uh, yeah, just a tough interception there for the Gills. You know, just, you know, I don't think Higgins saw the uh, defender – Cutting in and just it was an an interception. You Are know, you saying Hail Mary's too possibly? There's a potential. It happened in the Tampa Bay game in I can't Buffalo I can't I can't I I don't can this court is this quarterback gonna throw ninety five yards? That would be that would be that would be that would be electric, but that still would, that would be remarkable. But it's Second down in 10 regards. The Falcons are still in a formation, and they're just going to hand this one off to Moran. you got to be careful he doesn't fumble it, and he will not. Up to the 16. Seven seconds. Still and usually. that's going to end the first half. So, the Gales putting on a shutout so far. They lead the Falcons 20 to nothing. We'll be back with the second half. Jack Rizzo, Elijah Weintraub, you're watching High School Football on Surge Sports.
Are we on? Yep. Yeah. Welcome back to Alberta's. I'm not even in the shot yet. Because the mic is like it's like broken or something. Or it's not broken. Tangled. Sunglasses, so there's going to be a glare. Alright, you ready? Yep. Uh, ready Welcome back to Bardonia, New York, and Albertus, uh, home to Albertus Magnus Falcons. Elijah Weintraub, Jack Rizzo joining you here. Uh, it's been an exciting game. Our first half, let's just say that uh, St. Mary's had a lot of interceptions, and Kazir White was huge, as well as Bradley, uh, excuse me, Bradley Higgins was also great as quarterback, as well as a key star player of Ryan Cunningham. An impressive first half on the offense side, and what did you think about it? Just a dominating performance. I mean, I believe this this is the um, the third time in the last month that the Yale supposed put a shutout in the first half, all of them coming on the road. Uh, you know, offense struggled a little bit. They they didn't finish the half strong, but they certainly started it strong. Defense, though, just absolutely dominant. A couple of takeaways. Uh, interception by Kazir White, a force fumble by Jonathan Wertz, who, by the way, is having himself a hell of a game. A force fumble, two uh, pass breakups, and that 70-yard touchdown. But it's been a great team performance by the Gale so far. All right, on, Alberta's, on the Albertus Magnus Falcons side, what did you notice about them? They just – they. I, I will say the defense finished the half really strong. They That could give them some momentum. The offense has got to get it going, though. They've got to start to run the ball better. They've got to try to find some open guys, and they just can't turn the ball over. All right, well, we are ready to get underway in about three minutes. We'll be back with the third quarter. Join us right here. Jack Rizzo, Elijah Wancher on the call, right here on Search Sports. And, hey, by the way, go Colts. Go Seahawks.
Welcome back to High School Football on Surge Sports. Elijah Weintraub, Jack Rizzo joining you here as we get ready for the second half of action. St. Mary's will receive after a phenomenal first half by St. Mary's. 20 nothing is your score as we get ready for an interesting uh, set third quarter here. And a reminder, after 33 points, the clock will not stop. It will continue to run down. And remember, it's the battle for the Progio Cup. There will be a trophy presentation following the conclusion of the game. Yep, it was certainly a great first half for the Gales. A 20 to nothing lead. Had a couple chances on offense at the end they weren't able to capitalize on, but their defense had quite the first half performance. A couple of takeaways. Didn't, never really gave Albertus Magnus a chance on offense. And... We are, looks like we're about to get ready for the Getting ready half. to get underway. And as a reminder, non-public A and B brackets will be released tomorrow on NJ.com to take a look at that or your local team's information for the latest details on who they will be playing for the state playoffs, which will begin next week, November 3rd and 4th. Halloween weekend is also this weekend, our last day for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Of course, all of our scoreboards for the month of October have been in pink. We are underway in the second half. Kazir White there. Kazir White there. And great room there. And stops at the 31 yard line. Flag is thrown. We'll see who the flag is thrown on. I think it's going to be a hold. Maybe like a block in the back or something. Yeah, it looks Regardless like to say that. it will be a Oh, never mind. Face mask on 15 yard penalty that's with the, the face the mask and it'll bring up a first down from the 45. That's the first time I've heard the ref announce a penalty all season. And he's been doing it all the whole game. I even heard him. Uh, I heard. Yeah, it depends on where you're sitting. Line. Oh well. Point is, it's a 15 yard penalty due to a face mask, and now it is a first down from the 46 yard line. Clock winding down at 11.30. Again, the clock is winding down due to the lead that they have. Albertus Magnus enters today, two and five. Right, back and forth, back no false start cold, and it is Owens, Owens with Owens continuing to run down, wow. and he is officially stopped at the seven yard line, and a helmet does come off once more on the Albertus Magnus side. That was Giovanni Venner, Venner, and with the helmet coming off. 11 10 to go, clock continuing to wind down. Great gain there for Owens from the seven yard line. First and short. Yeah, it's a great way to open up the second half. Because uh, you're white that time with the ball, throwing it to Miss Yaron's nice little design swing pass. And the Gales are already deep into Alberta's territory. And because you're white's going to stay in a quarterback, Eli. And because you're white is going to stay in. He was quarterback earlier. And he's been subbing in, in and out for Bradley Higgins when needed. White throws it deep touchdown. to Brian Cunningham and his second touchdown of the game. 26 nothing Gales after another touchdown to Brian Cunningham. What a way to open up the second half. Two plays and the Gales take it the distance. This time with Kazir White and at the quarterback position. Uh, and a nice throw there over the middle to Brian Cunningham. And again, second touchdown of the game. Only one game this year where he does not have a receiving where he does not have a touchdown. So it's been it's been quite the been quite Quite the streak for the junior receiver. Paul Rocha will be back out to kick, and Brian Cunningham, who had the touchdown, will hold. The kick is up and is good. 27 0, the Gills lead. We'll be right back here on Surge Sports.
Welcome back to Bardonia, New York. That was the second touchdown for Brian Cunningham. And what a drive there by Kazir White, who was at the quarterback spot. And now Paul Rocho back out to kick once more. St. Mary's entering today's game is 5-4 and four in third place in the Patriot Division, trying to earn their way up. Short kick there. Will be caught at the 25 by Malvin Corona. Oh. And finally brought down at the 36. Nice little return there. Good starting field position for the Falcons. Yeah, back in first place in the Patriot Division is Park Ridge 6 and 2. They did lose to Rutherford in the championship game. Rutherford back to back, back NJIC to champions. Actually, yeah. I think they're three years in a row they might be actually. I don't know. Yeah. I think their starting quarterback though got hurt for Rutherford. And this is a not elite crossover game. This is the Parochial Cup Championship. Trophy presentation will occur at the end of today's game. Ten minutes remaining in this game as it goes to Johnny Oregano. He's got a first down and one down at the 37. 47. 40, yeah, 47. My apologies. Yeah, my apologies. Yeah, no, you're good. So what do you think about that play? Uh, nice little nice little design screen. Falcons have not gotten a lot of first downs, but they got one there, so good job by them. It's been an interesting game so far, for sure. Um, Gales two plays touchdown, and we'll see if the Falcons can do anything. Again, the Gales have pitched three first half shutouts in their last in their last five games. That is quite the feat, I believe. The last game, according to Max Preps, for Albertus Magnus Falcons was against Dobbs Ferry. They lost that game, thirty nine nothing. So we'll see if St. Mary's can can get a win here, a shutout style, twenty seven nothing. The Falcons at the forty six. Once again, struggling oh, is Vinny Pesatelli. He He's going to continue to run it and will run out of bounds and run for seven yards at the 47-yard line. I'll tell you, this guy's got some speed. I think I think they should be running it to him a little bit more because he does he does have some really good speed on the when he gets to the edge. And that was a nice, good way to get seven yards. I think it might be a sack, but instead a seven-yard gain for Albertus Magnus. Seven-yard gain, a huge, huge run there for Johnny Oregano. Eight thirty-eight. Oh, play action, Pisatelli. They got him. Oh, oh. Catch made by Matt Nevin. It looked like senior. It looked like he had more room in front of him, but he, he went down to his knees. And again, the rule in high school and college is if your knee goes down, the play is dead. Obviously, in the NFL, if your knee goes down, you get up and run. But and that is a there. first down. Yeah, the Falcons moving the ball well here. About midway through the third quarter now, um, near midway at least. This, is, this has definitely been their best-looking drive, though, so far. Clock continues to wind down. Coach for Albertus Magnus is in talks with the refs. That is the purpose for the potential stop. Clock continues to run. Play action once more. Pesatelli throws it. And almost... Intercepted by Kazir White for St. Mary's. No flag thrown. Second down and 10 from the 42. Nice nice play there by Kazir White on the pass breakup. Have first, already has an interception today. Uh, really good to see from him. Yeah, Kazir White, of course, the numbers say it all. In the last game versus New Milford, he had one passing and receiving touchdown, 23 passing yards, and 45 receiving yards, as mentioned at the top of this is today's game, and it just continues to grow even more and more with interceptions in tonight's game as well. He leads the team with interceptions. Entering today's game, he only had one. Now he has two to add to his book. Play action once more. Fisatelli trying to find room. Cesar Ramirez is right there. Unable to find room to tackle. Throws it out. Third down and 10. Good coverage again by the Gales, and that time they got more pressure, so made him throw it out of bounds. Third and, third and long, third and 10. 
think this is I think this has got to be four down territory here for the Falcons, especially being down by 27 and with 7:26 in the third quarter. This time, the, does the clock does stop on 7:26. Third and ten. Pisatelli finds open room, throws it out, unable to make the catch. Is Tommy Freeman, the freshman, throws it just short. Let's see what the Falcons line up to do here. I think they're going to go for it. Uh, this does not surprise me, being down by 27. Uh, yeah, being down by 27, you have to go for it on this type of situation here. Uh, and we'll see how the St. Mary defense can deliver on this very crucial fourth down play from the 42. See if the Gales can get a stop here. They See if they, they need one. Let's see if they can get a stop. Pisatelli. Straight drop back. Oh, uh -oh. And here comes Andrew Renfrey. Throws it. Incomplete. First down, St. Mary's from the 42. Good pressure there by Mabry there on the blitz and just not a great throw from Pisatelli. And the drive stalls there. It was, they were moving the ball well and then just four plays that didn't go for anything. And good job by the Yale's defense and they get the ball back. And they do will bring back out. Bradley Higgins and the St. Mary offense. As a reminder, join us on the 12th Horseshoe Podcast on Tuesday, 7 Eastern, where we break down week number eight in the National Football League. Already that fast. I know. I can't believe we're this far into the season already. I mean, and and November. On even for St. Mary's. I mean, I, 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 their, week one, their week zero game against Garfield feels just like yesterday. a few weeks. Yeah, literally. We're already into, we're almost into November already. It's mind-blowing as, yep, Bradley Higgins is back under center and up four is onto the field. Or I'm up in the backfield. This is an interesting formation, Eli. It's interesting for sure. Ford comes in late with the last minute decision play call and here comes Owens. Owens continues to move in and is gonna wow. be taken down into the 49 yard line. Falcons territory. I will say that Albertus Magnus has actually done a decent job at stopping the run. Um, certainly, it's been a it's been an aerial attack for the Gales today, but that was a great job there by Nasir Owens. Looked like maybe like a three yard gain. He turned it into an eight yard gain. That is just fantastic. It's just all about effort here for the Gales. So it's gonna be second and two from the fifty. It's like the same formation for the Gales. Same more formation. Here is their play call decision. Higgins to Same Owens. Play. Owens. Oh, he's got room. He has room. He has a first down in many uh -oh. more. He keeps going. And gets tackled down at the 17 yard line and a huge gain there for Nazir Owens. That's by far his biggest run of the day. Just great blocking there by the offensive line. And Owens turning on the Jets in the open field. The Gales starting to put this one out of reach for the Falcons. With 5.17, the clock continues to wind down. And Owens delivers once more. He had one rushing touchdown, 111 rushing yards, and 42 receiving yards in the previous game. And currently leads the team with 1,704 rushing yards. Interesting numbers for Nazir Owens and a crew, huge, crucial part to the St. Mary's team. Absolutely. See if the Gales can punch another one in here. And timeout. And it's going to be a timeout called on St. Mary's. We'll take a short break and I'll be right back on Surge Sports. Folks, please stay with us after.
Welcome back here on Surge Sports. Time out call by St. Mary's, and it was 4.44 to go. And it's the parochial cup, by the way, is for Catholic Championship. Both these schools are Catholic. And it's the inaugural one. And it's the inaugural one, so it's the first ever time that they're doing this. So there will be a Catholic uh, war trophy going out. Both these teams are Catholic schools. Yeah, we'll show one's that. on NGIC, and one's not NGIC. It's part of the New York division. So... We'll show you that at the end of the game. In the meantime, Owens has another carry on the play. And he is still on the feet. No whistle blown. Finally brought down at the 11-yard line for a gain of about eight on the play. Clock continues to wind. Yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been a bit of a rough year. I mean, you know, obviously coming off – it's tough for Albertus Magnus. I mean, coming off that 39 to nothing loss, you know, they're – they're trying to get on the board again. It's been, it's now been two weeks since they've had points on the board. They've, the last, the last seven quarters they've got shut out, sixty-six to nothing. It's just, it's been, it's a rough time right now for the Falcons out there. But they've shown some flat. They've been, I like, I like the way they played in the run game. But the last time Albert Magnus had points on the board was back on oh. the thirteenth of October, and here comes. Oh, he's the one. Uh, he is gonna be short at the one. Who, who carried it? Give it to Nas. That was, I believe, Kazir White. Uh, scratch at Dennis. Terry Dennis, the freshman. Oh, okay. Looks like they're marking it at the two. Gales have been really, really strong on the goal line this year. So, see if they can punch this one. This is really their first goal line like opportunity. Now, they've had many touchdowns, but they've all come from pretty far out. I mean, a couple. there's one 70-yard, there's a couple 30-yard ones, and... The one, the one that just happened just now is a tw about a 20-yarder. So this is their first going opportunity. They're going to go with a – looks like a very tight formation. First and goal from the one. They've got Huertas as the deep man in the back. And the Gales are touchdown. in for the touchdown. It appears to be Owens. 33-0. Uh, it looks like, oh, and Higgins appears to be limping. Uh-oh. While walking off. All right. Well, either way, oh, no, that's not Higgins. That was Ford. Ford limping yeah, off. Either way, it's a touchdown for St. Mary's. 33 nothing. Clock will not stop anymore. All right. This is as good as I can get it. The kick from Paul Rocho. He's done a great job kicking this year. He's four or five, uh, four or five, uh, no, I'm sorry. Three or four so far today. And now. Oh, no. No good. Uh, we'll be back. Welcome back, 33-0. Missed kick from Paul Rocho, and here we are. Clock will not stop at 2.48, following the kick from Paul Rocho. Uh, Rocho. Oh, nice kick. Nice kick. Catch oh, made at the 20-yard line. And will be brought down at the 34-yard line. And that is where the Alberta Magnus offense will get one more attempt. That was Malvin Corona, the senior for Albertus Magnus. Just been a tough day for the Falcons. He Years here yeah, at St. Mary's. So third down. This will probably be the last play. Uh, this will probably be the last play of the third quarter, Eli. It will more than likely be. As it is a handoff to Arginio. Arginio oh, has nowhere to be tackled. And here comes three St. Mary defenders. And there is Huertas to stop him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. 
flag. Clock stops at 17 seconds. I think there's a, they just said there's a flag. Yeah, there's a flag. This could be maybe like a block in the back or something, but I, I don't even see where the flag is. So, let's see if this is on. They're gonna just go. Here, here's the ref right here. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the St. Mary bench. That is a 15-yard penalty from the 35. So that will bring the ball up to the 20. Yeah, this is... This, we, the Alberta's Magnets might actually get some points. We'll see. Uh, well, they've, they've got a whole fourth quarter to do something. They've got 17 seconds left to do it here. Obviously, you'd, you'd be going for a touchdown, though, because they're not going to be kicking it down by 33. But we will see. And the clock is – we'll see if they actually clock snap Clock resumes. I uh, will do not say that they are going to – not expecting them to snap this. Snap it, and that will more than likely – Oh, no. Oh, they will try to. Five seconds. Four. They might Three, try to draw off two, oh, no, and they, they do go for it. They make it before the quarter ends. Oh, Remember, the ball is dropped. Wait, and the St. Mary's, Mary's has recovered it. That was Marcelo Estevez. I think the buzzer, I think the buzzer uh, distracted him, and it made him. It did. And either way, St. Mary's will get the ball for the fourth quarter. Marcelo Estevez with the catch and the return with the fumble. We'll be back after this. Welcome back, Marcelo Estevez, picking up the ball, filing the fumble. Clock will continue to run, no more stopping, as we're ready for St. Mary's to pick up back up the snap. Yeah, just really interesting the way that that fumble just happened. The buzzer distracting the runner and causing him to fumble. Oh, that was a interesting decision, interesting play there. Yeah, just very interesting way that fumble happened. But I think the Gales now they're just going to try to run some clock down and just try to get get back home with a nice victory against, uh, barring a miracle comeback against Albertus Magnus. Another play oh. action there, and it's White with the first down, and is going to be brought down at the 40-yard line. I didn't even see what happened there. It was a very, like, interestingly designed play, but yeah. nice, nice job there by Kazir White, and the Gales continue to rack up the total yards on offense. Excuse me, back at the 40, 41. So at the 41, and a good showing for St. Mary's today here in New York, uh, in Bardonia, New York to be specific. Uh, it's their f this is their first game this year in out of state. So good for us too. We're in New York today. Again, state playoffs will begin next week. Seedings and more will be announced tomorrow via NJ.com for non-public A and B. The rest of the seedings for the rest of the sections have already been released for all New Jersey teams. Not too sure about uh, Albertus Magnus of New York. Oh, Huertas has it. Huertas has it. Oh, wait, maybe not. I don't know. And short gain. Clock runs. 48 is where it stops. I didn't see you at the carry there. 
Regardless, they picked up some yeah, yards. Nice so they're already up near midfield. I wonder if um, BJ Cunningham's up to double digits yet on the touchdowns. He might be. Uh, he should be because he's had one every single game except for one. Oh, there's a couple where he's had two. Right. See those? Oh no! And I think that might—I think that might be a, a, a snap infraction or something. It is a pushes him back five yards. Regardless, it's a penalty there. Yep. Well, what a, what a stretch of the season to be for the Gills. They are looking to make it five out of their last six here against AM. And a short play there. And it's a first down That's, for St. Mary's. That is, once again, Kazir White, I'm going to rule it. No, I don't. Kazir White. Oh, yeah. All right. Very nice. Gail's trying to kill some clock here, and they certainly are. The under nine minutes to go. And again, the clock will not stop. Uh, right. So the clock is just going to continue to run. And we should, this one should be wrapped up very, very soon. A lot of injuries faced tonight for Alberta's Magnus. We wish them, obviously, are the healthiest, and hopefully they'll be back on the plane without any injuries or more. First down and 10 for the Gales. 8.25 from the 47. Higgins to Owens. Owens in the carry. Right. That right. will be. That is eight. Oh, eight. Who's eight? They've got some. Um, everyone's getting involved for the Gales today. It's certainly been a, just a, a team performance, and the clock is running down here. Um, see if the Gales can make it a 40 burger though see if they can do that if you missed this morning's show of sports with Mono Mono you could check that out on the Surge Sports YouTube channel Frankie uh, Pisani uh, has, uh, was on the show this morning he was a special guest uh, one of the loyal listeners of Jim's show and uh, you can go ahead and catch that up if you have not watched it yet And that is Higgins. Owens again. Uh, uh, not Owens, and it's a uh, first down. Another first down nice. for the Gales. Who's he? Dennis? No problem. All right, well, clock so is really starting to run down now here, Eli. Well, St. Mary just wants to continue getting first downs, possibly some more points if they can, and end this game with a victory. Dennis again. Oh, nice play. Pitch to Dennis. Brought down. It's like Corona. Second down and 11. Second and 11 for the Gales. Put the ball at the 36. Ball at the 36. Tyreek Dennis with impressive numbers in this fourth quarter. Yep. Gales have pulled a, a couple of their starters. Just trying to get some of the younger guys involved. Right. Uh, and, you know, these guys are all. Oh, Alessandro's coming in. Alessandro's coming back in. A lot more playing time for a lot of players. So that is uh, one. A special note on a special night, you know, and they can't say that they did in state, <laughs> they did out of state, <laughs> they played out of state football in New York. <laughs> Look at this formation. Oh, no, never mind. I thought, well, regardless, 533. Higgins to Dennis, 
Dennis will be stopped at the 32. Third down. Coming up following the game is the trophy presentation of the Parochial Cup. It is a for the Catholic schools. Both teams are Catholic schools. One from New Jersey, one from New York. Uh, the trophy will be given out following the conclusion of today's game. So stick around following the conclusion of today's game. And check out the 12th Rich Pockets for the latest results on who will be where St. Mary's is in the standings for the non-public B bracket. Or you could check out first on NJ.com. Dennis is going to stay in. Dennis is, will stay in as much as a few other players that are yep. not usually on the varsity lineup, including Alessandro, who was also a kicker. Dennis. Dennis once more. Oh, Dennis nice brought down oh at wow. the 30. Good tackle there. And now St. Mary's mm -hmm. will. Probably, probably just going to run. I would probably, probably say they're just going to run it again, fourth down. Ran. What's your decision? Down. They're gonna they're gonna go for Fourth it. Probably just run. It. I mean, there's really no point in punting this away, especially down at the St. Mary twenty or the the Albertus Magnus twenty eight. So yeah, I think the gals are gonna go for this one. Nick. Although Nico's in. Nico Palagastro is now in for the Gales. He's been playing JV. Has also been doing. A lot of the film work for St. Mary, so kudos to him. Yep, absolutely. Getting some varsity Everyone's time getting in there. It's a true team effort here. Yeah. St. Mary football team. And we are SM. 3.30. See if they can get this fourth down. That is. Yep, up. Right there he goes. Dennis. And Dennis gets himself a touchdown in New York. At six to the board, 39 nothing, St. Mary's. Nothing, Great St. block Mary's. once again, just fantastic blocking out there by the O line. The Gales had a chance to make this a 40 point game. But we'll adjust the camera for you. Yeah, I got there it. There you go. Right. Can't see the kicker, but you can, at least okay. you can see. No, no, it's Eli. It's fine. It's fine. It's 39 to nothing. It's. Well, sorry for the blurry window view of the. Yeah, so. Uh, of our press box yeah, of the uh, kick. Yeah. Paul Rocha will kick. We will. Provide you the commentary, which is more important. Clock does stop at 316. The clock, never mind, will continue to run. Paul Orocho with the kick. Brian with the hold. And that kick is good. 40 nothing. And what a night St. Mary's is having. And they also had a 40-point game in uh, – uh, yeah. Falling this 10. is pretty much – yeah, 48 was the other highest 40-point scoring game. 48-14 was the final. Well, with 302 remaining, Albertus Magnus will get another chance to deliver. We are at Smoke Street Campus here, and that includes vaping. So please refrain from doing so. We have young ones out on the field. Thank you. All right. So what have you noticed about this uh, St. Mary's offense folks is uh, a few other JV players and non-players that do play varsity and got some time tonight. Tyreek Dennis gets a touchdown. Brian Cunningham had a few, and it's been an exciting game. Oh, yeah. it's been a fantastic game for St. Mary's. And they will have the trophy presentation coming up at the conclusion of Again, today's uh, game. Again, please, no vaping in the stands. Thank you. Gales kick, off. Gales kick off once more. Catch is made at the 21. Heron with the ball. He cuts it Heron. Takes it out to the 40. 255 left in the game. Dawkins. Grossi made the tackle. Flag is thrown. Where'd where where this come from? Okay, well. Just it's going to probably be. It'll be stopped at the 40-yard line, but now the question is, who's the flag is on? And it's probably going to be an unsportsmanlike after the play. Right. But I didn't. But most same area players have left. Kicking number two. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Nick Rossi. 
15 yard penalty. All right. Falcons take over at their own 45. 2.51 left. And the trophy now makes its way to the field for the Parochial Cup Championship. Where is it? On the golf cart. 235 left to go in the game. See oh, the yeah, there cart? it is. Yep. One handed. Well, 229 to go. St. He's gotta Mary's. Be, he's got to be careful with that. Don't don't drop it and break it. <laughs> we will show you that presentation coming up at the it's end of the today's pass. game. Oh, there you go. In the meantime, a uh, first down for the, for the Falcons. That would be Tommy Freeman. You have Paul Rocho there on defense making the tackle. Paul Rocho, yeah, makes the tackle. See if Alberta's and it was a 15-yard penalty in. from Seymour's early. That's why it's pushed back even more. And now the... Let's get ready for first down. St. Mary's will get today's trophy. Oh, pressure. Oh, Alessandro. Alessandro could tackle him, but not able to make room. And it is almost caught by Tommy Freeman there. But good speed from Alessandro. Trying to yeah, that was a great play the there. Alessandro nearly getting a sack. That would have been so cool to see. Um, but forced the uh, incompletion there. Transfer caught student from Italy. Yes. Junior in St. Mary he's a, High he's School. A, he's a great kid. I, I love Alessandro. Second, second and 10. ten for the and I also love the St. Mary Gales football team, the way they've been playing these last couple of weeks. They have just been a joy to watch. Clock is stopped at a minute 36. Uh oh. Pisatelli trying to find room. Throws oh. it deep. Oh. Unable to make the catch again with Tommy Freeman. And Ethan Pena Herrera was there on defense. Wow. That, that should have been well, a, what a close that, chance that been, for the Falcons. That should have been a touchdown, but a, just a drop. They had It was two on one, but two for Albertus Magnus and one for St. Mary. Great work by Ethan Pena Herrera, who's there. Yeah, just a, a flat-out drop there. Unfortunate there for the Falcons. And they have two, two more chances to try to get this one in. A minute 28. Gail's finishing off a just dominating victory over Albertus Magnus. Oh, oh. Tally, oh. Alessandro almost had him sacked, but in the meantime, he's still on the loose, oh. still on the chase. Uh -oh. But here comes a catch made. It is a first down. Stops at a minute 15. Man, there were chances there. I think. Oh, no, never mind. Clock winds down. Yeah. The two defenders there. Let's hope that uh, the unsportsmanlike report doesn't cost the Gales a shutout. Hopefully it doesn't. One. They need. No, first down. First down and 10 from the 21, 22. Same thing. See the game. Oh, Alessandro again. Deep throw. That's going to keep the clock running, though. Satelli, Johnny Arigno makes the catch. 36 seconds. That is going to wind down this clock in this game. They're going to get one or two more plays here, maybe try to get a chance, but either way. Your parochial cup champions are your St. Mary Gales, regardless of what happens in 23 seconds. Catholic cup. Catholic cup. Flag throw. Oh. If that's a, that should be a 10 second runoff. Never mind. So it's been a fun one here, Eli. Needless sure. to say, it is not the Procure Cup. It is now the Catholic Cup. They might, they might get Going one Going back more. is Paul Rocho. They're still getting one more chance there. Oh, oh, we got blocked. Alessandro. Oh, oh no. Oh. Alessandro almost had him. Either way, the live. clock is out. Oh, pff. oh, dear God. <laughs> dear God. Either way, the game is over. The Gales win 40 to nothing. And those are your Catholic Renfrey Cup the champions. 
It is not Parochial Cup, it is the Catholic Cup Champions, and it goes to St. Mary High School. Trophy Cup, nothing. trophy presentation coming up in just a second. Stay with us. Congratulations to St. Mary High School of Rutherford, New Jersey, as they are your Catholic Cup champions. What a game for the Gales. Just absolutely dominant start to finish. And it's only, this is the second time this year that we've had a football game end in 40 to nothing. The other one came in the NFL in week one with the Cowboys shutting them out 40 to nothing on Sunday night. So a couple of dominating 40 to nothing performances. I'd like to bring both teams out to the middle of the field by the Falcon logo, please for the presentation of the inaugural Catholic Champions Cup. So the Catholic Cup's Champions Trophy will be now heading out and be awarded to St. Mary High School. Yeah. They're gonna do their handshake line first. This is, this is a, I love this tradition. I love just players showing so much respect for each other, you know. You know football's a brotherhood and you know, that's. Absolutely. And it's been a pleasure to, thank you. It's the first game in what we hope to be a long-lasting tradition between these fine institutions. Possibly for a new tradition from New York. Uh, so they'll meet at the Falcons 50. St. Mary's with, will win the inaugural cup, the Catholic Champions Cup. Catholic Champions Cup. To them. Need your orders? Yeah. Okay. See you guys. Have a good one. Right. Congratulations. All right, so now the trophy presentation will happen, and we'll find out who will receive it first for St. Mary's. Yeah, well, they're going to... It's been an absolute fun one. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us, as always, on Surge Sports. Like it's been fun to watch. Prior to the presentation of the cup, we are going to say that Players Thanksgiving. Can you right. please stand? Uh, the camera yeah, Mary's. it's at midfield. Towards St. Mary's? Okay. St. Mary's. Yeah, it's on St. Mary's. Everyone will please stand. Thank you. Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, we know that all things are from you and through you and for you. We know all things from you are to be received with a glad and thankful heart. Football is no exception, so we thank you, Lord, for this good game which gives us the chance to run and sweat and work. We thank you that it teaches us how to work towards something beyond ourselves and how to be trustworthy teammates. Lord, we praise you for the gift of football. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So following the prayer, the Catholic Cup trophy. The cup will be presented by Johnny Argenio to Nazir Owens. Nazir Owens lifts up the trophy for the for the Catholic Cup champions as they celebrate in victory form. Now that will do it for us here on Surge Sports. For Jack Rizzo, I'm Elijah Weintraub. Thank you for joining us for the Catholic Cup championship, and we will see you next week for the playoffs. Check out NJ.com for who our winner is. And as we always close every podcast and every show, go Seahawks and go, go Devils. Colts. And go Colts and go Rangers. And go so Gales. Long, and go Gales. Goodbye.